We're almost at the end. Energy. Uh, I'm just going to rip. I don't have any visuals. Uh, I'm Brian. I work at Blue Sky, which is an extremely modernist, online, very cloud, global connection, global broadcast system. And you're like, well, that's not the vibe. Um, but I've also worked on other stuff. And I think we've come up with some cool, you know, we've gotten a team. We've had a couple years to build some stuff. And I think there's, I think the future is these more local first things or these alternative networks. Maybe everything will converge and we'll have some beautiful system that can do everything in 20 years or something. But I think there's a couple pieces of stuff that we've built that could be reused and brought down to um, like other, you know, smaller projects or other like offline first kind of things. Um, and so I'm going to talk about two of them, mostly one of them. And that idea is uh, URIs and URLs. URLs are really cool. They're like a cool technology. I feel like they're a little underappreciated, but it's just like real great idea. People, developers and users and everyone kind of like, it kind of makes sense. You can use a URL and some content pops up and everyone can kind of think about it and put the same URL in and get the same content to pop up. Um, so most people are used to a HTTP URL. So you have like HTTPS, rnetworks.com, you know, 2024 slash schedule, right? And that kind of makes sense what you're getting. So you've got a scheme, you've got an authority, which is like a host name of a server. So if in this very server world, that's where you're gonna go to get that content. And then there's a path of what that content is. I think we've done, we came up with our own URI scheme. And the main thing we did is we swapped out the authority to not be a server, like a location on the network, an, a street address or something. We put an account identifier in there. So the authority is like a, you know, it might be, a, it's not a human being, it's not your name or social security number or something like that. It's a, like, like a pseudonym, it might be privacy preserving, whatever you've got. But it's like some authority, it's like a person or an organization or an agent or whatever. That's the authority. You have to do some other resolution magic to find out where to get there, but it kind of makes sense. It's like, what am I, you know, just conceptually, the authority is the person, not a service or a server. And this means the URI can keep working in the future. It doesn't really matter where the data is. It could be coming from any, any set of places. Uh, another thing we put in, we think the schema is cool. Like you should use schemas. You can just go register a schema. You just have to send someone an email and you can get a provisional provisional URI, don't do this 10,000 times, but if you've got a cool project, like go do it, it's not, it's pretty accessible. Uh, we encode the schema, separate from the scheme, we have like what the data format is gonna be, so you kind of know what you're gonna get when you look at the URI, that's helpful for software, you know if you're gonna be able to process it and do something with it, or you know how to render it. And then like, for us, I don't know, we don't really call it, but, like the path is just kind of an instance Something we haven't done is like a version of the data that might be nice to throw in there as well. But this idea of having like a URI that has an authority that's an account, you, you kind of know what you're gonna get and then some instance of it uh, I think is nice. This is like in contrast, for instance, a lot of people doing are building these content address networks. So something like Git, you just get like a commit and it's just like, what is it? You don't know. It's this totally opaque, unhelpful thing. Maybe you want the hash and the URI, but the URIs are just like quite nice and you can put them in documents you can link between stuff that's the pitch the idea do some URIs uh, the other thing that's worked well for us and this is like a little more wonky is the way we do data is these kind of like we, don't, we need branding around this if everyone has ideas but we basically have like a graph of data documents so you have objects of data you link between them we use this system called interplanetary linked data which is cool and there's some great ideas in it. It's like horribly branded. No one knows what you're talking about. If you say that to very experienced, multi-decade like developers, they're like, what the hell is this linked data? This isn't linked data, it's just objects. Anyways, it has a binary format so you can hash it really well. You can also represent it as JSON. It has schemas, you get it, you can look at it. Coming from the library world previously, there, there's this like intergenerational push to do everything with triple stores and uh, you know JSON like RDF and JSON LD and it's just really hard to do that stuff. We think these like data objects that you can still link between in a content address way works pretty well. It's worked pretty well for us. It's not for everything, but um, those are two little pieces that I was I was going to hand something off to the next kind of generation of people building stuff. I think those are two pretty good ideas. We're done!